Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for being in here so early to see us and to, to listen to our story. Uh, we're BehaviorSec, um, and we're a behavioral biometrics company. Uh, we're from Sweden, and uh, I want to show you some of the technology that we've been using in Europe that we think is going to be applicable here in the U.S. to the North American market. What behavioral biometrics is, is this idea that we can identify or verify a user by how they behave on their computer or on their mobile device or just in the environment they're in how they interact, what applications they use, how they type, uh, how they gesture, how they uh, move their mouse, are all individual biometric uh, attributes that we combine together to identify a user. Uh, we've just been selected by Gartner to be their cool vendor this year of 2012 uh, for our technology. And the reason that, that we believe Gartner selected us as this cool vendor is this, this idea that we can add a transparent layer, extra layer to security. They, and we agree, identify that there's no silver bullet to the, to the issue of, of identification and verification on the internet or in the mobile world. There's not one technology is going to win and solve everything for everybody. So the approach that they advocate and that we fit into is this idea of a multi-layered security layer. Um, and also that one looks at it continuously. You just don't look at it as a gatekeeper, like when you get into your application or when you get into your website, that you're constantly monitoring the situation, the transaction, the environment, to see what the threat is or what the risk is, and to make a decision based on that risk, whether to continue with a transaction, whether to, to ask for further authentication, uh, or, or simply just stop. So what we bring in is a transparent layer. Now the idea of the, the benefits of this transparent layer for biometrics is that there's no extra costly hardware, there's no education of the user, there's no need to, to kind of train frontline staff and have support to, uh, kind of desk and stuff. All of this is done transparently, just as the user uses their website or their, their phones. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we've been successful in, in Europe, in Scandinavia, getting every single bank to adopt this technology for their web and for their mobile platform. We've taken some success outside of Scandinavia, in the UK, and in, in Europe. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate so kind of the simplicity and the transparency of it now. So what I've got in front of me here is, is a, a mock-up and a live um, sample of our um, iPhone uh, SDK embedded in an app. And simply what, what happens here, if I type my normal password, going across the wire, underneath this, we've been catching as the user hits the screen and releases. So what we're doing on a normal keyboard, on a normal machine, without any, anything extra, um, is, is getting a, a biometric, a pattern. We, uh, we capture the rhythm of how they do it, not what they type. It's important to note that we're not kind of recording what they're doing. It's just how they do it, the speed between the keys and how, how fast they do it. And if I try it again, you get these scores. And the idea is the score and the confidence in the score helps come into this risk, the time of day, the, the, the user profile, what kind of money they're moving, and also how, how similar they are to their previous. Now, the user hasn't trained this up in any way. It's just as they type, we continuously build up a profile and pattern. And if then I type the same code, but in a kind of different pattern, different rhythm, You'll see the score there switching across is close to 1%, much difference. Around 50 we're saying we don't know, close to 100 we're saying it's definitely the right person, and closer down to, to a lower score we're indicating it's not them. But in addition to this, um, and I'm going to switch to the laptop to show it off, this happens, the timings were captured locally and the transaction went across the wire. And what's in front of me here on the, um, on the laptop is our, our cloud-based server which I'm just going to, you can go on this and we're going to show it afterwards in the, in the, in the hall uh, and you can, you know, take to, anyone can download the apps or, or, or go on the website and see it. But I, I can see an overview of what's going on. Here's all the transactions that happened over the last while. If I quickly search in, I can see the transactions I've just done. Uh, there's other users using the system. So here's me, the, the, uh, uh, that's my, my, my ID number. Um, and I can see, and you can see there's a quadrant there, and the fact that I'm up in the upper, uh, the upper right corner is that we're very confident in the score and that I got a very close match to what it was. The other scores in the quadrant would be other users that I could possibly be. So the difference between this and kind of crypto and ID thing is, is not only can I verify it's the right user, but if it's not the right user, I can go and search and see who could it possibly be instead. So there's a whole uh, um, list of potential fraudsters or known fraudsters 
uh, that one can compare against as well. Luckily here in my, my score, there's not too many too close. Um, this is also kind of moving on from that simple text entry. The fact that these devices, and I'm going to switch to, um, to, to a handset here, um, there's more than just typing on a phone like this or on a device like this. And this is, the, uh, this is an example of gesture-based um, behavior metrics. Again, no extra hardware, no special screen, nothing extra. And with the normal kind of pattern that I would normally have, I can keep my score up. But if it was hard, if I'm you know, putting more pressure, funny angles, and being very slow about it, the indicator shows there that it's not, pro it's not me. This app is available in the App Store if anybody wants to try it out. And we've got the banks to embed this, and some of the telecom manufacturers are interested in putting it in as a security layer. So in addition to knowing the pin, to addition to knowing the pattern you're putting in, you've got to do it right. You've got to have the right pressure, you've got to have the right speed, and be consistent with your record. And this one is all done embedded in the device. This is, this is not needing network, not, not any um, uh, uh, connectivity. Uh, it's, it's match on device in a handset without extra hardware for biometric. So as I said, we're, you know, we're, on the, we're in the show back there. We can show off these. You can try them out yourself. Um, and, and also, there's some links on our website if you want to download them and try them out. We believe the technology is very, very suitable for, for both mobile banking and the internet. Um, and uh, uh, you know, sort of for banking, for payments, anything that's reducing the security down to kind of pins and passwords and entering numbers uh, without having smart cards or tokens or that kind of thing to add on. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. So I hope you come out and see us. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening. Thank you very much to the people at Finnovate for having us here and putting on such a good show. And I uh, hope you enjoy your time at the show and, and your time in San Francisco. Thank you.